Hey, what's going on everybody? Hope you're having a good day as always. My name is Michael and thanks for joining me. So yesterday I posed a question on Twitter that said, should you get into investing even if you have debts or should you wait until you're totally debt free and then get into investing? So that's what I want to talk about today. Uh, if you guys are interested in participating in these polls in the future, definitely check me out on Twitter at Common Sense Mike. I'm going to start trying to put these polls out before I let out the video and then also share some of the comments that I find really, really interesting. Now, before we get started, there is one piece of news that I want to share with you guys. And that is a comment that I received from Juan Bravo who said that, hey, since I've been watching your channel, I've refinanced my truck. I went from 7.8% to 3%. 0.9% and save $2,000 in the process. I just want to give a shout out to you, Juan. That's awesome. I'm so happy you decided to do that. Plus, I'm really happy you decided to share that. You know my goal is to save you guys $150,000 this year in interest, and you added another $2,000 to that. So that puts us at $42,000 for the year. Clearly, I've got more work to be done. So guys, if you've got debts, definitely let me know if there's any way I can help. Email me at commonsensemike at gmail.com. Now, back to the question at hand. Should you get into investing before your debts are paid off? Now, as always, I'm going to try and approach this from both angles because this is not, in my opinion at least, a black and white issue. There is some gray in between, right? Not everyone has to have all of their debts paid off before they get into investing. Likewise, there are some people that shouldn't even consider investing until they get their paid off. It's all just dependent on your situation, and that's what I want to talk about. Let's start first with the yes, you should get into investing even if you have some debt. Now, in my opinion, the people that should consider investing, even if they do have a little bit of debt, are those that are carrying loans that are going to take longer to pay off and they carry a lower interest rate. We're talking about cars, right? You can get those around two to three percent. We're talking about mortgages. You know, obviously those take a very long time to pay off and they're also around, let's say, the three to five percent range. And then you've also got your student loans, right? Those can also be higher balances. They take a while to pay off, but luckily the interest rates are still somewhat on the low side. As far as interest rates go on loans, these are fairly low. I'm not saying these are good debts at all. You do not want to have these debts. You want them paid off as soon as possible. But again, you don't necessarily want to totally neglect investing for let's say 5, 10, 20 years, the amount of time that it may take to get some of these loans paid off. When it comes to investing and saving and building wealth for the future, time is your friend. Right? Everyone says like, look, you know, if I would have invested in this back in 1990 or 1980, whatever, I would have had this much money. Well, the same thing is probably going to be true, you know, 30 years from now, right? Do you want to wait 30 years to start on square one? No. Plus, not only that, but if you're, you know, waiting 30 years, you buy a house at, let's say, like 25 or 30, that means that you're 60 years old. You're, what, 10 years away from retiring. You want to start at 60 years old waiting for your retirement? I don't think so, and most people wouldn't, right? So the idea is that I, I don't advise carrying these debts. I obviously want you to pay them off as fast as possible. I don't like car loan debt. I don't like mortgage debt. I don't like student loan debt. I don't like any of that stuff. And it doesn't mean that you need to shove all of your money into your investments, right? If you've got, let's say, $500 a month to invest, Maybe only a hundred of it goes towards the investments and $400 of it goes towards the loan. Maybe it's half and half. It doesn't really matter, but I would try and tackle both at the exact same time. Now, on the other hand, there are situations where you should not even consider getting into investing until your debts are paid off, right? Well, whereas you should get into investing if your, you know, your debts are going to take a long time to pay off and they're low interest rate. Well, if the opposite is true where, you know, you could pay them off really quickly and they're charging you really high interest rates. Get that stuff knocked out before you get into investing, right? And the idea is this, like you don't necessarily know what the market's going to do. You can go into investing and have solid returns for let's say one, two, three, four years straight, but you don't know that that's going to happen, right? It could be a downturn right around the corner. But what isn't a question is the interest rate that your loans are charging you. Like if you've got a credit card or a personal loan or God forbid a payday loan, your rate is guaranteed, right? And sometimes those rates are 15, 20, 25%. Not only that, but if you're just getting into investing, there's a good chance that your debts are probably larger than the amount that you can invest. So again, it goes back to math. Why would you focus on, let's say, growing $500 at 10% when you've got $5,000 charging you 20%? It just doesn't add up. You really do need to get this stuff paid off before you get into investing, right? So again, if you've got credit cards, personal loans, payday loans, anything that's at a high interest rate. When I say high, I'm talking about really anything above, let's say 8%. I think you should get that stuff knocked out. 
Not only that, but it also makes sense that once you get this stuff paid off, you have a lot more money to invest each month, right? So that'll get you motivated to pay it off faster. Not only are you gonna pay less interest by paying this stuff off faster, but you're also gonna be able to invest more here in the near future because you'll have more money freed up each month to make your investment contribution. So that's my thought on the process. Obviously, some of you may agree or disagree, and that's what I wanna hear from you guys. So comment down below with what your thoughts and opinions on this issue are. Likewise, do not forget to like, subscribe, share, and don't forget that we're doing that giveaway at the end of the month if our channel hits 4,000 subscribers. So make sure to share this video, get that subscriber count out, because I want one of you guys to get that money. But thank you so much for watching. Take care, I'll see you next time. Hey guys, I know I just said this stuff, but let me say it again. Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate all the support that you guys give me. And to support you, here's two more videos that I've made in the past in case you haven't seen them. Don't forget to share these with your friends and family so we can help all the people achieve their financial goals. Likewise, if there's anything that you would want to see made that you haven't seen thus far, definitely don't hesitate to let me know. But thanks again, take care, and have a good day.